Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to this service of worship here at St. John's United Methodist Church on Warm Spring Road. We're grateful for those who are able to come into the building for worship and welcome those also worshiping online. It seems as though the summer season is upon us. And with that means that some people will choose to watch from their homes, but I want to remind you that we would welcome you into our building. It's air conditioned. It's a great place to be on a Sunday morning. The family of God here at St. John's Church is uh, just an amazing, supportive, wonderful group of people. And we invite all to join us for worship anytime. We've come to this time here in the first Sunday of June, a Sunday when uh, we're able to celebrate the Holy Communion together. As you came in, if you um, didn't pick up your communion elements, they look like this in a small chalice. They are in a basket at the entrance, and we encourage you to do so. Um, so that you'll be prepared. And if you're worshiping at home, would you just get some crackers or toast or coffee or grape juice, whatever you have um, to celebrate Holy Communion with us later in the service. Let's prepare our hearts for all that God would have in store for each of us this day as the prelude plays. Shout of joy to the Lord. Go ahead and do it, everyone, everywhere. Hallelujah. We shout to the Lord. Worship Yahweh with gladness. Sing your way into his presence with joy. We rejoice our God reigns. Enter God's open gates with a password of praise. Come right into his presence with thanksgiving. 
We are ready to worship the Lord our God. Let's worship by singing hymn number 139, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Bernita, what's his first name? His first name is Charles. 
Charlie, and a wife? And that's your cousin. Okay, Bernita's cousin Vicky's husband, Charlie, um, has really been on a rough road roller coaster in and out of the hospital and now a brain bleed um, and back in the hospital. So let's pray for both of them, but especially for wisdom for the doctors to know what is next. Louise? Um, Samantha went back into the hospital with blood clots. She was home and doing pretty well. Another blood clot situation, and uh, that's prayers for Samantha. Um, did you say she is home? She was home, now she's back in the hospital. Back in. So, again, that roller coaster is so difficult when you think things are looking up and then they take a turn for the worse. Let's, let's hold each other up in this. Do you remember Carl Hill's <laughs> sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad, but continued prayers for Carl Hill in his cancer treatments. If Ron starts his treatments at Hershey on the 18th, so he's probably going to say anything either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like prayers. That's right, prayers for Louise and for Ron. Ron begins his radiation uh, treatments in Hershey on June 18th. And that's a that's a daily thing, right? For how long, Ron? Seven weeks. For seven weeks, a daily treatment of radiation. So we are thanking God for a rabbit transit and for getting him there, um, <laughs> there and back safely. And so prayers for those drivers. <laughs> I'd like to ask prayer for Ray's brow. Um, he and his wife are members of Park Avenue. Right. And I don't know if you're aware of the situation. But he's he's uh, in the process of being diagnosed with um, the tonsil, <coughs> tonsil cancer that has spread into the esophagus. Okay. And it's very fast moving. Um, that's one of the, they're one of the couples that we used to go to cheeky people with all the time. So we're really close with. Okay. And then Joy, my last day of work is July 15th. Oh. <laughs> Hope finally gets to retire <laughs> on July 15th. It's her last day. But I'm still work. a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so prayers for Hope um, and this next step of her journey, but also prayers for Bonnie and Ray Sproul. Uh, Ray has just been diagnosed and working through what happens next with uh, tonsil and esophagus cancer so I was surprised when he answered the phone when I called <laughs> the other day uh, because I had heard this diagnosis and he um, sounded in really good spirits and so can we continue to pray God's work in that situation prayers also for the family of Marcia Bookhammer she was your pastor a while ago they have had a death in the family and so we lift them up to the Lord. Anyone else? We're going to go right into prayer unless you are just like, oh, pastor, we have to sing something as we go into prayer. Anyone? <laughs> Typically we sing Revive Us Again, but I didn't put it in, in the schedule this week. So let's come to the Lord and bring our needs to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing is too difficult for you. You are the God of the impossible. And so even as we bring our needs and our requests for ourselves and for others that we know or that we love, that we care about, we bring them with an I don't know, a solution that in our humanity we think might be the best way to go. But nothing is too difficult for you. So we pray with faith. And we pray that you would increase our faith, Lord God, because sometimes we just don't even have that tiny amount of faith that will take us to the next phase of our journey. 
many requests have been shared this morning and I ask Lord God that you would bring them repeatedly to our mind this week maybe not by specific name maybe we won't remember the name but we'll remember sitting here or listening online and hearing about the need and and we will bring it before you because in that faith that is weak even then we're able to entrust these situations to your care we praise you for the joys and we give to you releasing to you the burdens and cares and needs of our loved ones remind us to pray O oh lord because you hear our prayers some are sitting here some are listening online who have needs and burdens that are too personal too private they feel too small or too something to say aloud. So God, by the power of your spirit, by the presence of your spirit, by the comfort of your spirit, would you look inside our hearts and those things that we can't even verbalize or maybe we don't even know, we bring to you and we lay them at your feet. We ask, Lord God, that in your sovereignty, thy will be done. And as we continue in our worship, Spirit of God, would you move and stir and breathe life and revive us again. We so want to be your people, your children not just because we love the relationship that we have, but because others need to know that same relationship. So we pray that you would stir in us revival that will spread to our friends, to our families, to our neighbors, and that we would begin to see your fire spreading among us. Revive us, we pray. Fill us with your love to overflowing. We ask in the name of Jesus the Christ who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our giving is also an act of worship. Sometimes we may think of it as a, a that's okay, Rod, just stay there. Sometimes we think of it as a commercial break. <laughs> Our opportunities are an act of worship because they demonstrate for us the body of Christ as we participate in life with one another. One of the things that we're doing together is, oh, no, <laughs> I was wrong. Here, let's do this together. So on June 20th, which is a few couple weeks from now, um, we're going to celebrate the wonderful life of Bill Kessinger. And uh, instead of a worship service at this time, there's going to be a picnic. And it's going to be a fun celebration when you are able to share your Bill Kessinger stories and uh, support Peg and Mike and Sue in their loss, um, grieving with them and yet rejoicing in Bill's relocation the heavenly so that's a stop by come and go type event an open house as you will and it's on the family property also together we are reading the 31 day guide to prayer now i have to admit i was a little taken aback by the king james version of this so this is something you know you you get it online and you think oh 31 day guide to prayer that would be great andrew murray is uh, just a classic um prayer expert so to speak but he's old-fashioned and so as i was reading i thought oh lord help me and help my people 
to be able to gain and to glean from this a uh, glimpse of what it means to pray for the Holy Spirit to revive us. And I hope that you're finding um, some good in it. I, I've underlined a couple of things that, um, you know, I just think, oh, oh, may that be for us. But some of the words are a little overwhelming. So stick with it. We're in it together. Keep reading daily. Um, you have seven days to read five um, five different devotionals and I pray that it will continue to bind us in unity as we move forward with that um, there's a baby bottle a couple of them are left and a couple of them have come back in on Father's Day is the last day that and that's again two weeks from now that you can bring your baby bottles back Ooh, wow, that's a lot of bees. <laughs> Bring them in so that we can be a blessing to pregnancy uh, ministries. And I think that's all for that. Let's just pray for our offering for those who were able to give and that God will bless it abundantly. Lord, hear our prayer on behalf of your people as they give. Some give so sacrificially, some give so regularly. Some give, Lord, out of abundance, and others give just in their scraping by. As we give, may it be an act of worship because we believe in you and in your church. And Lord, may that giving be blessed so that the community around us will learn to know the love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Gotta have a drink before we move on. Now that is a commercial break. <laughs> so, as you know, we are um, in a revival series, um, asking the Holy Spirit of God to revive us once again. So it seems kind of odd that we would go back to the book of Proverbs, but that's exactly what we're going to do, and I'll tell you more about the why of that um, later. Oh, I can't turn in my Bible because we're reading again from the Passion Translation. I'll have to get me a hard copy of that, uh, but the words are on the screen, and uh, they're just so full of, well, passion. <laughs> I guess that's why they named it that. Um, so some of it is familiar to me to you, um, but we encourage you to listen with new ears and open ears. My child, if you truly want a long and lasting, satisfying life, never forget the things that I've taught you. Follow closely every truth that I've given you. Then you will have a full, rewarding life. Hold on to loyal love and don't let go. And be faithful to all that you've been taught. Let your life be shaped by integrity, the truth written upon your heart. That's how you will find favor and understanding with both God and men. You will gain the reputation of living life well. Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you and he will lead you in every decision you make. Become intimate with him in whatever you do and he will lead you wherever you go. Don't think for a moment that you know it all for wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion and avoid everything that's wrong. Then you will find the healing refreshment your body and spirit long for. Glorify God with all your wealth, honoring him with your first fruits, with every increase that comes to you. Then every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of inner joy. This is the word of the Lord from the Old Testament. Thanks be to God. So Proverbs is one of the wisdom books. There's, they're like right in the center of your Bible with Psalms and Job and Ecclesiastes. 
right in there and they provide wisdom. But when I saw this catchphrase about Proverbs, I just loved it. This is what Proverbs is, simple wisdom for a complicated world. And don't we find ourselves in a complicated world these days? So the Bible, the truths of God's word, not just the wisdom books, but all throughout scripture, that's the simple truth, simple wisdom for a complicated world. Proverbs was compiled, a bunch of different people contributed to that. Most often, we think of King Solomon as the author of Proverbs, and most likely, well, he um, contributed about 3,000 different Proverbs, um, but there were other wise men as well, and they sat and compiled probably between 700 and 400 B.C., um, so it was a long time ago. And over the course of those 300 years, the wise sages of the time sat around. Can't you imagine it now? These geeks, <laughs> these nerds, like with this great academia sitting around and talking about what are the truths and where do we find wisdom? And, and then the scribes are trying to write it all, all down. Uh, 1 Kings 4.32 tells us specifically that Solomon contributed about, about 3,000 of the Proverbs. Then the first nine chapters in the book of Proverbs, this is just your little uh, informational lesson. Uh, the first nine chapters are all about wisdom. And from there then we go into the couplets that you're familiar with, um, I don't have any, but I could just flip right over to it and probably find something. But the first nine chapters kind of stand alone as an introduction to wisdom. There we go. Okay. Um, you'll see couplets. Wow, I turn to the one that is probably most familiar. Start children off in the way they should go, and even when they're old, they will not turn from it. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. Can you imagine these guys just sitting around? Maybe one of them would start it, kind of like our knock-knock jokes of the last week. And somebody would say, the sacrifice of the wicked is detestable. And then somebody else would say, how much more so when brought with evil intent? That's what we think of when we think of Proverbs. But the first nine chapters especially focus on wisdom. And they're instructional in and of themselves in how do we become wise in the ways of the Lord. I've told you this before, but I'm going to tell you again. There are 31 chapters in Proverbs. 31. And there are 31 or 30 days in each month. So you could start on day one and read a proverb a day and start again next month and next month until they really come to pierce your soul. Um, there's a lot of approaches to Proverbs, but that's one of them. So Thursday, I had to go over to Stewartstown. Anybody been to Stewartstown, Pennsylvania? It's a little south of York, and I've made the trip to York numerous times. As you know, that's where I lived before I moved to Chambersburg. And so I've had occasion to go back over to York. And every time the GPS wants me to go north on 81 and then south on 83, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Why do we have to go so far north and then come so far south to go? I mean, this is south of York. So I got it in my head. I don't really want to do that. A, I don't really like 81 and 83. I don't like the traffic, and I, I don't like the scenery. I don't want to do that. There's got to be a better way. So Bob sat with me, and we looked at the map and said, I think you can go over this way and kind of a little more direct, but it's going to take longer. Well, sure enough, Going north to go south was like 90 miles for an hour and 15 minutes. Or going directly uh, over kind of straight, looks straight to me anyway, 
uh, was an hour and 45 minutes. So I thought, I really want to go that way. I want to go this scenic way, you know, kind of over the mountains and around and in the bends and stuff. And so I planned two hours to get over to Stewartstown, what could have taken an hour and 15 minutes. But it was going to be a good drive. There, it was a funeral, and I was going to be able to share and support uh, some friends over there. Little did I know that on the direct route straight across, I would encounter not one, not two, but three different construction times that I had to come to almost a complete stop. One of the times, yeah, I was, you know, in my glove compartment, you know, rearranging and stuff like that because we were sitting there for so long. One time after another, I ran into that, and then one of the times was a detour, an actual detour that had I not decided, how do you like that sign? Detour this way, detour that way. <laughs> if I had so decided, I'm just going to do this my own way because I know this is the way, Bob, and I looked at it, the map, it's going to take me there if I go this way. But I thought, well, maybe this one time I should probably listen to the G GPS, and I went that way, only to find out that had I gone straight, I would have run into a detour and had to backtrack even more to get where I was. So there were just detours. This is what I finally felt like the next one. <coughs> After I, when I got there, one sign after another, one detour, one construction, beautiful scenery, but hampered now. It's a good thing I planned two hours to get there because that's exactly how long it took me to get over there. So when we come to Proverbs 3, we're talking about this very thing. We're talking about trusting God with our lives or doing things our own way. Which do you think might be a better idea? All too often, we just think our way is the best way. And we're going to go and we're going to see the scenery and this is going to be wonderful when perhaps God has a different plan. I think, you've heard me say before that uh, Esther 4.14, perhaps you've come to this time for such a time as this, is my life verse. But this, Proverbs 3, is my new life passage. Because as I get to the end of verse 4, you will gain the reputation of living life well. That's my goal. That's how I want to be remembered, that I lived my life well. Why? Not by doing my own thing, not by following my own plans, but by trusting in the Lord. And so we come to verse 5 and 6. You probably memorized it when you were young, and you probably, like me, memorized it in the King James Version, right? Trust in the Lord with all, say it with me if you know it, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. And it's true, but that's King James. When I ran across the Passion Version of this, trust in the Lord completely. I was blown away by that word. And do not rely on your own opinions. Whoa. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you. And he will lead you in every decision you make. Become intimate with him in whatever you do. And God will lead you wherever you go. Don't think for a moment that you know it all. Yeah, I get in trouble with that sometimes. For wisdom comes when you adore the Lord with undivided devotion and avoid everything that's wrong. 
So as I look at this very, very familiar passage, I ask, now what does this have to do with revival? This is something that I've known since I was a wee little child. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. But isn't this what we're talking about? Where the Holy Spirit of God enlightens us anew and afresh to the things in life that we should be doing in order to have that intimate, vital, life-giving relationship with God. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. The goal is that we don't veer off the path. Now, I always had trouble with the, with the version that says, and he will make your path straight. Is life nice and straight, ladies and gentlemen? A resounding no. no. Life is not straight. It is full of that first sign we saw. All of the curves and all of the mountains and down in the valleys and all around. Life is not a straight path. That just because we follow Jesus, everything's going to be peachy keen. Right? Life is not straight. But our goal is is to live straight in line with Jesus in keeping with our focus fixed on him. So that even when the curves come, even when the mountains and valleys come, our focus is straight. We are straight with our obedience, straight to eternal joy, and straight to a God-honoring life. It's that focus on Jesus that no matter what comes our way, we're able to continue to trust in God's goodness. How can we trust in God completely? We can trust in God completely because 2 Corinthians tells us this, all God's promises are yes and amen. I have heard this before, have you? All God's promises are yes and amen. And I thought, where is that? <laughs> it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of God's promises. And so through him, the amen is spoken to us, spoken by us, to the glory of God. Okay? All God's promises are yes, fulfilled in Jesus Christ. God has good promises for us. And our job is to say amen to them. I think we need a little practice. Because you know what? I think up in heaven, all of God's promises which are fulfilled in the heavenlies in Jesus Christ are yes, yes, yes. And what's our job? To agree with them with the amen. All God's promises are yes and amen. All God's promises are yes and amen. amen. We agree with Jesus, who is the fulfillment of every promise. That's why we can trust the Lord completely. Because all God's promises, all God's promises are yes and amen. You don't know God's promises unless you read his word. Not just the book of Proverbs, but all throughout, from Genesis to Revelation, God is making promises that God has kept over and over again, and that God is keeping and will keep. Because all God's promises are yes and amen. 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 All right, great job. So don't lean on your own understanding. When I think of lean, you know, I think of lean on me when you're not strong. You know, you're leaning on someone. If you're leaning on yourself, what kind of, what kind of uh, foundation is that? So lean on the Lord. Rely on him to guide you. I, as I was driving... You know, I thought, man, I should drive more often two hours <laughs> because God really was speaking to me about this message. So if every week I took a little two-hour jaunt, we could 
really allow the Spirit of God to be speaking to me. Um, and as I drove, this little song came to my mind. I doubt that you'll know it, but I just wanted to sing for you. Let the Lord have his way in your life every day. There's no peace, there's no rest until the Lord has his way. Place your life in his hands. Rest secure in his plans. Let the Lord, let the Lord have his way. As we do that, as we trust in the Lord and let God have his way in our lives, we will be revived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord God, we open our hearts to you now that you will revive us again. No matter what the circumstances of our life may be right now, we place our lives once more in your hands, trusting you, Lord God, for revival so that we can be on fire and change our world. In Jesus we pray. Amen. I didn't put the slide up here, but as I thought and as I spoke, you know, I don't know if you've ever been in front of people, but as you're speaking, there's this little spot in the back of your head where thoughts are still moving about. <laughs> and as I, as I spoke, what I thought was, you know, it is the great mystery of our faith that brings us to this table. It is the mystery that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. That great mystery that is so comparable, really, when I think about it, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, it's so big and so awesome and so vast. That's why we come at communion. Because we want to be reminded and remember and honor Jesus Christ in the mystery. We again want to turn from the things that are wrong, from the times when we haven't trusted. We want to again confess and proclaim and declare Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it's in that attitude the mystery that we come to him. Your chalice has two sides and two tabs that you're going to pull. For the first one, you can go ahead and pull the top and get, get your little piece of bread ready. Hold that in your hand as you do. Remember that on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus Christ met with his disciples and they were having dinner together and he took the bread and, and he broke it. And he said something that was so confusing at the time that we understand now. This is my body given for you. The bread was broken not because any bone in Christ's body was broken but because his body himself was beaten and bloodied and sacrificed, and Jesus went to the cross, given for you. And he took the cup next, and, and it was their Jewish tradition to have their wine afterwards, but he took the old covenant, the covenant that was a sacrifice of a perfect lamb, and he took the cup and said, this is the new covenant of my blood, and every time that you drink it, would you remember how much I love you, that I loved you so much that I went to the cross for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This is the new covenant. And so today we're remembering Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will 
come again. Pour out your spirit, Lord God, on us gathered here and on these elements, the ones we hold in our hands, the ones that are here on the table. <coughs> Remind us, O oh Lord, of your great love for us. And in the mystery, we come, trusting you that your promises are yes and amen. the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And then you'll carefully remove, turn your cup over and you carefully remove the side that has the juice in it, remembering the blood, the blood of Christ that was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. do all that we are is to the glory of God and it's in the mystery and the promises of God that we rejoice. We stand as you're able and our instrumentalists will come and prepare as we sing together to God be the glory. It's hymn number 98 the words will be on the screen. We stand as you're able.
lead us in the response. All God's promises are yes and amen. Amen. You be going in the love and peace of Jesus Christ. Share that with your world today. Amen. Thank you.